Hey, what's up everyone? So I am on the sequel of one of my favorite bikes that I reviewed last year. This is the Astro Deluxe, nice fancy name. But the biggest thing about this bike is that it is motorcycle inspired. It looks like a motorcycle riding down the road here, but also they've added a rear suspension system here. So that is going to be in addition to the front suspension, which does have 100 millimeters of travel. But this rear suspension is an air suspension. But the main thing now is that when I am riding on the road like this, not only do I have the power, but also I have the comfort when I am going over potholes and stuff. But I think they've also upgraded the seat as well. Now the seat on the previous version was also silicone filled, so it felt great as well. But now you have this seat in combination with the rear suspension. So you have a super comfortable ride. But the main thing I like about this bike is going to be the power, the torque. And you want that with a bike like this that you are going to be maybe riding in the streets like I am right now. You know I stay in these streets. Uh, but anyway, you'll see here once this light turns green and it's green and here we go. All right, this is just using throttle only with the half twist throttle. And you can see we're already at like 17 miles per hour and I'm not going to be holding up traffic. That's the best thing about this bike. But also this bike still has that same signature cool motorcycle look. So the way the frame is designed is that you have this like this little empty space in the middle of the frame. And in this open space, you can mount water bottles or anything else with the multiple points that you have to mount things. But I actually mounted their basket that they also sent over as well. So this basket allows me to be able to store things like maybe a jacket or a bike lock. And it also does have this very nice little kind of netting or webbing at the top that you can attach on very easily to be able to now make sure that stuff is not going to be flying all over the place. But C3 Strom did a great job at adding these little touches on the design of the bike that just really pulls everything together, like the stitching on the seat and also these fake air intakes here on the side. And also you have the C3 logo that's actually cut out of the frame of the bike, but they even color match the front and rear plastic fenders to the color of the seat. And that just really ties everything together. And just these little design and frame elements and where the controller sits here at the bottom looks really nice. And it also has that same brown color as well then this bike also does have a rear rack too which is kind of small but still gets the job done also the cable management up front is nice and tight and you do have a decent amount of integrated cables here as you can see where they go through the front of the frame but there is one thing i would change and that is the sticker that's on the side of the battery it feels just really kind of like last minute so yeah it doesn't fit my personal taste but hey maybe you like it all right you know what let's go ahead and get into my speed test here so throttle only class three pedal assist level five in three two one boom all right, so the acceleration of this bike is nice. This bike does have a 750 watt motor that does peak out at 1800 watts. And also it has 90 Newton meters of torque, so it has some power. So we're already at 19.5 miles per hour according to my GPS app, 19.6 according to the bike's display. And this is what you should expect from class three, just using throttle only. But the second I start to pedal, we immediately get that jolt of energy and we're now able to get up to around that 28 mile per hour speed. Now this is a single gear bike though. So you don't have multiple gears. You don't have a shift or nothing like that. Just one single gear. So once you get up to like the maximum power that you can get from pedal assist, you do get like some ghost pedaling. So like right now, this is about as fast as I need to pedal. And we're around like 27 miles per hour. If I was to pedal even harder like I am now, I'm not going to be going any faster. So it makes no sense. So just chilling, pedaling, you can get up to 28 miles per hour in class three. All right, so now for the same speed test in off-road mode. So I went inside of the c -Strom app that's available for iOS and Android, and I switched it from class three to off-road. And it does give you a little warning telling you when and where you are supposed to use this off-road mode. One thing you should be aware of is that the bike doesn't remember that you're in off-road mode once it turns off. Off. So every single time you get on the bike and you turn it on, you have to switch it back to that off-road mode. But anyway, let's get this thing going in three, two, one, boom, throttle only, pedal assist level five. And we are already at 12, 14, 16 miles per hour. Acceleration is so good. 21 miles per hour. According to my GPS app, the bike's display is about two or three miles per hour ahead of my GPS app bike is showing right now 31 my gps app is showing 30 and we definitely have some wind today though and we hit 31.5 31.7 31, 31 32.3 in a gps app 33.5 on the bike's display and we hit 32.5 on the gps app 
let's use these hydraulic disc brakes again. Oh man, so good, so good. So yeah, I hit around 32, almost 33 miles per hour. So that's about what I've been getting. Again, I weigh 220 pounds, depending on how much you weigh, the wind and the terrain that you are driving on. And the four piston hydraulic disc brakes on this bike are just really good. So you have front and rear hydraulic disc brakes, so I can come to a stop in a hurry with no problem and I just squeak my tires and everyone is looking at me. But right out of the box, this bike is just easily one of the best looking e-bikes on the market right now. Now you can get this bike in two different colors. You have their signature gray color, but also this new moonlight color that they sent over, which this is my favorite right now because this thing is like a cream color with a little bit of brown and also some black going on. It's a really dope color. And I actually have a pair of Nike shoes that actually match pretty well <laughs> with this bike. So I've been using those while I've been riding around on this bike. But overall, this bike just has a clean clean look to it. You have an LED headlight on the front, pretty big, motorcycle inspired. It also has daytime running lights and then also does have a couple of different beam modes that you can choose and switch on the handlebars, but it's super bright at night. And then on the back, you have this really cool LED tail light that also doubles as a brake light as well. But also you do have some turn signals that do show up in this brake light. And it's a really cool like swiping pattern that it does have. It looks really cool. And up on the front, you do have the turn signals on each side of the headlight. But you still don't have any audible sound though, which sucks because I wanna be able to hear the turn signals just in case I leave them on after I make a turn. So you don't have that on this bike still. And another thing that's missing that they said that this thing does have on their website is the fact that you don't have any type of turn signal indicator on the actual display on this bike. So that is one thing that I think is missing. I'll try to go through the settings to see if I can fix that and I'll reach out to the company. But right now I don't see any type of turn signal indicator here on the display. But besides that, the display is a really nice, big, big, bright display. It is super, super bright. And also it's a color display too. So it's kind of hard for me to capture when I'm riding around. But as you accelerate, you have this little kind of orange little bar that goes up. But the screen will be showing you your standard information as far as your speed, your battery level and your range and all that stuff as well. All right, now let's talk about range of this bad boy. So this does have a Samsung 1040 watt hour battery inside of it. And the company estimates that you can get between 32 and 78 miles out of this thing. Now let's talk about that range because the 32 miles is going to be when you are just using throttle only. And then up to 78 miles is going to be when you are using the pedal assist and they estimated that range when you are using pedal assist level one and so the more or the higher the pedal assist that you go up to pedal assist level five that means the motor is just going to be helping you out a little bit more each step that you do go but from my experience with riding this bike around for a few weeks is that the range is pretty spot on i weigh around 220 pounds but this bike does support up to 360 pounds and the bike itself does weigh 99 pounds so this is a lot of weight on this including myself because i have been eating a lot um, but this is a lot of weight that it is moving around but the range is actually pretty solid and as far as rider height this is going to be good for riders between 5'3 and 6'6". Now the battery for this bike does sit right here and you can take it out using one of the two included keys just be a little bit careful because it does sit very close to the frame but yeah now you can take this battery inside and use the charger and it takes around four to five hours to get this battery fully charged up. Now when it comes to pedaling I'm six feet tall and my knees come up a little bit but it's not as bad as I've experienced on other motorcycle style e-bikes so you know pedaling is not bad but because you do get that ghost pedaling after a certain speed where no matter how hard you're pedaling you're not really going to be propelling the bike faster I don't really find myself pedaling that much unless I just really want to maximize the range maybe I'm going for a ride and I don't know how long I'm gonna be out that day then I'll probably use the uh, pedal assist but there are times where I might be like on a bike trail or something and I might want to pedal just to make people know that I'm not on like a motorcycle or something but <laughs> other than that when I'm on the road in the streets I'm going to be using this throttle and this suspension system is pretty unique the way it is set up because they were able to design it within this aluminum frame to really keep that original style that they had with the first version but add that extra comfort level and both the rear and the front suspension are adjustable so you can manipulate them to get that right comfort level I'm just keeping it right out of the box and it's fine for me but again depending on how much you weigh and stuff you might want to adjust the suspension a little bit and we got some metal plates in the road I'm just gonna go right over them here and test out <laughs> oh yeah test out the suspension and so yeah this bike is just super fun man and so like as far as like the tires this bike does have 20 by 4 inch fat tires and these are going to be e-moped type of style tires you can see that written right on the side of them but yeah these don't have a, a lot of treading on them as far as like deep treading 
so this really isn't like ideal for off-roading but you can see here that i did take it off-road and this bike because you have the power still gives you some good performance but now i'm getting a little brave here so i have an idea to go down this little kind of crevice here it's actually pretty uh steep down and up so we're going to see if i can do this i'm gonna try to do it throttle only but i might need to start pedaling but yeah let's go ahead and give this a try and we're gonna go down first i'm using the brakes here which is nice but now oh yeah let me give it some power and throttle only can we make it can we make it we just about made it there i put my foot down for a slight second but yeah that's pretty impressive so this bike definitely has some power and now let's go the uh, other way here uh oh this looks even a little bit steeper than the uh, previous one i did but yeah down and up and here we go throttle only i don't know if we're going to make it so let me use the gear oh oh all right did you hear that so the actual chain was uh when I started pedaling, it was kind of like slipping a little bit. All right, so I'm pedaling now, so I haven't had that happen before. Now, that is a very extreme test. I normally wouldn't go up something like that on a regular day, but yeah, my, my chain did sound like it was kind of like slipping or just not really catching the, uh, the gear as well as I would have wanted to. But bottom line, we still made it up those hills, and the first one I made it up throttle only, so that's still pretty impressive. I think we actually might have some sand back here. Hey, what's up, y'all? Oh, yeah, we still got a little bit of gravel. A little bit of sand now i'm giving it some gas or actually some uh electricity <laughs> and this bike is handling pretty well all right so this thing by the riverfront here is like the uh, e-bike tire killer because it is so much junk and stuff back here but i'm going to take this bike over here because i just want to see how it does and i'm not going to stand up at all i'm just going to keep my butt on the seat and this is one of the smoothest rides that I've experienced on an e-bike back here. Now, I might have to go on record right now and say that up to this point, this might be the smoothest, most comfortable ride that I've gotten on an e-bike. And the first bike was nice. It had a nice seat, but it was missing that rear suspension. What you're seeing right now is actually after I finished filming my main part of this video because I'm at 4% battery, but I have no more power with this bikes and you can probably hear that the chain is slipping a little bit and this happened when i was doing some off-roading and going up a very steep hill and some other reviewers have said the same thing that the chain on this bike is just a little too long and they could probably just fix this problem just by removing some links on it and you could probably do it yourself but the main thing i just want to point out here as i'm getting my workout in is just that you know i wish the battery would cut out actually at like around zero or one percent and not at like five percent because i was expecting just to have a little bit more juice to make it back but anyway lesson learned and you also do get an electronic horn for this bike that's on the right hand side of the handlebars and very loud it'll definitely get someone's attention and on the left hand side of the handlebars you will find the controls to be able to navigate the display and also this very cool little orange power button and then on the right hand side of the display you will find a usb type a port so you can charge your phone up if you have it sitting on the handlebars so that's very convenient i would like to see a usb c port on this thing because of its price and also i've seen it on some other bikes that are really like techie focused but again usb type a is just nice to have oh man hey how's it going <laughs> talking to myself recording this video <laughs> I know it look weird. <laughs> All right, so look, I think it's safe to say the worst part about this bike for some people will be the price. It does cost $3,099 at this moment. And I'm not saying it's not worth the price because basically you can get other bikes that cost more than this that don't have the feature set or the design and the fit and finish that this bike does have. But on that same token, you can find other bikes that cost less than this that can give you a faster speed and might have similar ride quality as far as like the front and rear suspension. But as a total package with the look of this bike and also the speed, the range that you do get and an app that you can pair to this bike via Bluetooth that actually is a slick app that does work. You can use it to actually be able to get riding or driving directions using the built-in map control. And you can turn on the cruise control function with this bike. You can even turn on the headlights if you wanted to. But yeah, the app just rounds out everything with this total package of performance and design. But if the price still does scare you, the good thing is that the company still does sell their original Astro and Astro Pro e-bikes. But the base Astro, I think, still starts around $2,400 or so. So you still have some price differences there that you can choose from. All right, so my battery just hit 7%, so I need to wrap up this video. But anyway, I'll drop a link down below in the description of this video so you can check out this bike for yourself on this product page. And also, don't be afraid to let me know what you think about this bike in the comments below. But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you later. Peace.